welcome back everyone in this short short video we're going to have a quick tour of the open science framework as a precursor to looking at a open science framework template for pre-registrations um, so we're starting off now on the standard dashboard i've already signed in um, i advise everybody to make an open science framework account it's both useful for uh, sharing um, and even just storing your own data and information. It's really useful to organize projects and information within those projects. Um, one of the nice things about OSF is being able to connect with your ORCID really easily, straightforward, um, and to be able to connect all of your work that way. Another kind of useful thing is that your projects can be public or private so you can see here that I've got uh, several private repositories um, at the minute they might just be ones that are set up to share in the future for example uh, when a paper is submitted or pre-printed or they may be ones that you're deciding that you just want to store some data or uh, study materials and maybe share them at a later date or even just keep them for your own research. Now what we'll do is just have a quick tour of one of my projects that is a previous study that I've pre-printed um, just to give you a tour of the system. So you can see that all the projects here we can have a look through. Um, public components uh, are sort of components of projects, so smaller parts of the same thing. We won't go into that too much to keep this tutorial workshop a little bit briefer. Okay, so we'll fire into this one. Now each project gets its own URL. Uh, this can also be linked to its own DOI if if needed. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that we've got several contributors here. We can set contributors to have different permissions depending on how uh, whether we want them to use or adapt the information, whether we just want people to have access to the the files, the information on here, or whether we want them to actively be able to contribute and change things. You'll also notice here that you're able to make projects public or private. They usually start as private. You can set that when you start a new project. Um, one caveat is that once it's been made public, there's always going to be something that can be found because the internet is the internet, and so it's worth noting. Okay, so we can have, as we have here, a DOI for the particular repository, and this might be useful if you're using the repository to also store data and code, for example, and you want that to be itself indexable and citable, for example. We can have a description, which can be anything. Here it's just the abstract for the paper. Um, now what's useful is this little bit here. Um, the notes if the repository is linked to a, a preprint of any kind. So in this case, when I preprinted the paper, I was also able to link it to the study information and the study files, which I'll show below. Now, um, in here, in the components, we can have a number of additional components. Um, you, you might split, for example, a project into several different studies that each have their own sets of files and so on. You might want a private component um, in which you're able to store files that aren't accessible to others. There's an awful lot that we can do here, um, but we won't go through everything just yet. Now, here we have the files. You can store many, many files on OSF. Most file types are supported. There's quite a large um, storage capacity that you can use. Um, again, this is a really useful thing to store even just your, your research group's data to have a, a decent backup. Now, we can upload, we can download everything, uh, we can create a number of folders, and this 
storage is set to the United States, it can be set to wherever it needs to be, and that's useful to know beforehand. Um, now in this case, the storage here in the OSF itself is also linked to a registration, I'll get to that soon. So that's a, a timestamped uh, version of the repository. So this can be linked to uh, submitting papers and things like that, for example, so that you know for definite that those are the files that you're interested in and then you're not accidentally picking up future versions, for example. So in this case, you'll see that I've, I've uploaded bib, a bib, bib file for the library that's used. Uh, there's the R files to actually generate the paper itself, run the analyses and so on. There's a folder with the raw data. There's folders that also include the, the summary data. There's the output itself. We can store a number of things here. It's extremely useful. And you'll also see that above, I've linked this to a GitHub repository for the same project. Um, that can be useful if you want a, a changeable version. I like personally using the OSF version as a more kind of permanent um, attached to a submission, for example. And the GitHub is a more changeable so that I can fix bugs or anything like that if need be. OSF also tracks the activity that you use. Um, so whether, for example, you've, I guess in this case, I've created a registration of the project just before I submitted it to the journal, um, which is useful going back uh, many, many different iterations. You see that at one point I added all of the data. At one point, um, it, st it stores a lot of information. Ah, here we go. So also track if you've edited descriptions and things like that. Okay, so under the registrations tab, just as a brief preview before we get on to the pre-registration specific video, here we go. So here is the registration that I mentioned before. Um, so you can see on the on the 16th, I think, yep, 16th of October last year. This was uh, created as a registration. Um, this particular open-ended type, uh, don't need to know too much about. It basically just timestamps everything and creates a copy. So, so that you're able to track this change. That's the important thing. What we can do, assuming that we don't have this or assuming that we want to create a new one, um, for example, when we look at pre-registration, is to click on new registration. Now we have a number of options that we can go for um, to match the kind of wide range of possible pre-registration types that we can use. And we'll get to those in one of the next videos.